call the meeting to order at nine at six oh nine. <laughs> nine. <laughs> feels like nine. Oh, no dyslexic there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Is there any adjustments to the agenda? Okay. Nope. Hearing none, uh, we have uh, for a motion to approve minutes from our Monday, March 11th meeting, our Monday, March 18th meeting, and our Monday, March 25th meeting. Oh, we met a lot in March. I move that we uh, accept the the uh, minutes uh, as presented. So All right, we have a motion uh, approve. Um, Made and seconded. Uh, all in fa favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Great. I will move on to public comment. Do we have any public comment? I see Nancy's there. If there is public con comment, if you can identify yourself um, so we know who's speaking. I have nothing. I'm here to just see it. Okay. Well, thanks, Nancy. Nice to have you join. Okay. We'll move on to board comment then. Okay. We're getting to that basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, then let's move on to the best part of the meeting, which is the celebration of learning. Uh, preschool question of the day. Take it away. Yeah, yeah. Stand, stand or bring your chair around here if you don't want to stand. All right. Um, so I'm Bradley Griffith. I'm the preschool teacher at Rochester. Um, for those of you who don't know me. Um, so my presentation tonight is entitled Question of the Day. Um, this is something that I uh, found on a preschool group and thought was a really neat idea. Um, and so we phased it in this year. <clears throat> um, started pretty small, but um, then have built learning onto it. Um, with math, math and literacy, um, and have been pretty surprised and pleased by the sort of unexpected results that have come around. Um, so we started with just a pretty basic question. This is our magnetic whiteboard that we have in the classroom, um, and all the kids. I put a little, I put their name onto a butterfly that has a magnet on it, um, so they can. We read, we write the question, we read it out, and then they answer yes or no. <clears throat> put it on on either side. Um, next slide. So you did, um, are you wearing glasses? You know, kind of an observation. Do you like bananas? Something they can, you know, personal preference they can choose and think about. Um, and then um, as they became more familiar with the concept, I started scaffolding the question uh, into other classroom learning activities uh, like letter recognition. Do you have an N in your name? Um, <laughs> we, did, we did a bunch of different letters. Um, and then uh, the next one, do you like to draw? That was a unanimous. <laughs> um, and from that, then they kind of, it just sort of gets them thinking about, you know, well, what what might I like to draw? Or, you know, what I want to draw with my friend? And and um, just kind of some different um, different things. And then, um, go to the next one. So then, they, and then on the other, this is a double-sided, kind of like an easel. So then they would start drawing on the other side or writing. They would write their names. Um, and then if you go to the yep, to the next one, then they started doing that. They wanted to do their own questions. <laughs> That's great. And so then, so it started, it started out kind of like this. They did no or yes. And then just kind of some letters up at the top. But then this, this one actually, so it's, I don't know if you could read it, but it says, do you like rainbows? Which is also nice. unanimous. This is back before St. Patrick's Day. Um, but one of my students wrote that out. I, I helped her with the spelling, but. Um, wrote the whole question and yes or no. So she came up with it. The, yeah, the yeah, idea. She thought of it and she wanted to write it, and so um, we worked on it together. Um, and the next one is also, do you like the Flash? We have a lot of a lot of <laughs> a lot superheroes. Of <laughs> um, and that one was more mixed. There was there was some who who liked the Flash and some who didn't. Uh, but that was also completely written by by one of the students. And then they are they started coming up with just little um, little three word statements or. Um, you know, writing their name and then adding up, adding something onto it. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. Um, and it's and it's so and it's helping them. I mean, they're recognizing the words yes and no, sort of the form of question. Um, you know how how you might set up like a chart 
or, um, or a graph. Um, so it's, it's a lot of literacy, some math learning. Um, and then um, from there, they, they were, they've, um, yeah, they've started doing simple statements on there. And then on the next one, I believe is the, um, this, this one. So uh, Leo, who's um, a preschooler, but he's, um, he's the oldest one in the class. Um, he's, he was writing out the, the page from one of his favorite books, just copying the, the letters onto a clipboard at rest time. And then they also use magnetic letters on our other other chalkboard, which is on the heater, um, to spell out their names. So it just it just kind of scaffolds it into different um, different ways they can learn. Just kind of thinking about letters and words and sentences and putting it all together. Um, and then the next one, a couple more uh, questions. We we don't we don't do them every day because um, sometimes we just are busy or have a field trip, but we try to do it two or three times a week um, and just come up with a different question. Either we'll think of one or we'll get one of the kids to throw out a suggestion. Um, try to find one that, you know, it's not going to be all all yes or all no. There'll be some some mixed response. Um, and then the last one, um, my second grader, Naomi, who comes to school with me, she wrote this one out. Do you like the color blue? Um, so it's it can, I think, can you know be used for upper grades as well, or or a similar concept, um, but it really gets the, it gets even the preschool, and even the younger preschoolers, even the, the three year olds, just kind of thinking about like that concept of of asking and answering a question, and um, yeah, that's, that's really that's what we've got. That's really good. that it sparked their um, interest to want to create their own, yeah, and to really start thinking about. Um, you know, on a little deeper level, yeah. not just these things. That's great. No, I, I really didn't expect that. I, you know, I thought it would, they would kind of start recognizing the yes and no okay. and recognizing their name and, and the letters um, was sort of the, the primary reason I started it. But um, yeah, it's really brought in a bunch of different really neat directions. That's um, great. Um, any other yeah. questions or comments? Seems so, like it's, it's, Starting to push them towards writing. Definitely. Yeah, no, the literacy part of it is definitely the kind of the biggest, biggest part, but then it kind of has these these different little sparks as well, which is that's really just really neat to see. That's great. Does anybody have any uh, other questions or comments for Riley? No, it's neat. I wish I was there. I know. That's, <laughs> that's wonderful. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, it's definitely the highlight of our meetings for sure. <laughs> to see what's, to what the kids are doing. And um, it's really wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Billy. Thank you. Thanks for okay. Great. Well, we'll move on to reports to the board, the superintendent's report. So you, you have my report in hand. Um, the the only thing I would add at this point, there's some other things that we'll talk about later in the um, under discussion that I'm excited to just give updates about in general, but it's just following the legislative session. Um, you know, there is a, there's a still a push in the legislature to try to possibly look at tackling the Ed Fund this current session. Um, in regards to just trying to have a, a short-term fix to try to help stabilize tax rates, but also have an eye to the future. You know, I just think it's something we're gonna have to continue to follow closely. Mm -hmm. uh, more so, I worry a little bit about like, just making certain that we're, as a state, taking our time to try to really get this solid. like. Act 127, we saw some of the fallout that happened around how the weights were, just the weights alone were manipulated, right? And so I just I just always get a little nervous when there's a sense of urgency to solve the problem, but trying to do it, you know, between now and June, just right. makes me a little anxious, Absolutely. that's all. So I just know I'm following that. I, I talked to a representative today about my thoughts around it. It is it is one thing that I just think we're going to have to keep a real close eye on. Mm -hmm. 
I think you're spot on. I would go even further. I would like to see um, uh, the Vermont School Board Association and the Vermont Superintendent Association, the Vermont Principal Associations, basically putting up a yellow flag and saying, let's slow down here. Um, because the only thing they can do quickly is blunt, it's simplistic, and it's going to either hurt our students or hurt our taxpayers. In my sense, it's going to um, hurt our students, and it might also hurt some of our taxpayers because if they do what some of them are talking about, which is like having a, like a, a, a fixed grant, um, uh, that um, what happens to income sensitivity and all of that. And that's aimed at those, allows us to have quality education and um, takes care of the people that, that, that don't make a lot of money. And so they, they just want to cap spending, quote unquote, and then they do away with some of the rest of the stuff that could really have unintended consequences. So I think we should be actively getting to slow down and get a committee together to really think this thing through um, and so the next time um, they can have some of the benefits that we've had under our, you know, people are just throwing it, be careful not throwing out the baby in this case. We've got a lot of, we're the only state in the country that has income sensitivity. Mm -hmm. You gotta be very careful before you start playing with that. And, and uh, so I, I think we need them to slow down, not only watch. Because uh, you know, the only thing I see happening is, oh, here's a simple thing, we'll just cap everything. Um, and well, then how do we get the educational quality that we need here? And uh, so that's that's my two cents. So, yeah, we, I mean, there is a there's a VSA meeting on Thursday that I, I, I plan to attend. It's going to be virtual now due to the weather. Uh, <laughs> and so the I do expect that we'll have representatives joining us, the superintendents from House Ed and Senate Ed. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I'll be able to give some additional information in you know, <clears throat> meetings, and I'll probably put an update up to the board after that okay. on Thursday. Um, yeah, just, yeah, stay tuned on that. I just, there seems to be a real urge, as, as Bill was talking about, about trying to do a, what I would say is a quick fix. <laughs> um, and so that, uh, that has caught my attention more so because that seems to have picked up more steam since I last gave that since the full board meeting on Tuesday, actually, right? Like I was not feeling this way on Tuesday and I'm feeling this way now. So that does seem like it's snowballing mm -hmm. a little bit. So yeah, that's not good. Um, so I, yeah, I'd offer that as the update. Uh, other than to say it was uh, Art and Soul was really great. We had uh, students and families come together from across all the 10 schools of the supervisory union. Um, our set had good representation. Um, and it was truly a really authentic celebration of learning and the visual and performing arts. And so, you know, what I said to those teachers was kudos. And it's, it now is on us as I, as you know, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of the notion of passion projects and capstones and it's part of our strategic plan that we are doing more of those types of authentic kind of demonstrations of learning mm -hmm. to our community more often so that there are multiple ways for our communities to engage to see what our kids are truly capable of right and i think that in the arts often we have those authentic assessments like teachers put their students out there and that work and learning is on display on a regular basis. I don't think we do that enough in other content areas. So, um, you know, that's what that capstone project and ideas that I'm trying to get at. And so know that, um, that, that that's something I'm, I'm continuing to have conversations with folks about and really try to emphasize is that, you know, how do we create lots of different opportunities like that to engage with our community and show our community, what our kids do know, understand, and do. Spot on, absolutely right. So um, I just would add that and entertain any questions folks may have. Okay. Uh, one, just on the, 
portrait of a learner, we're going to see that next month, right? The full board will see that this, this month, month. Okay. In April. Yep. And we'll see it as. Yep. Great. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. We saw a draft of it, came to the admin, central office admin team late last week, and we met on it today and already provided some feedback. So we're hoping to see another version. And then that will be <coughs> shared with the admin team across the, you know, all the principals and then also the boards. It was not ready for prime time yet. So, <laughs> um, but we're, I think we're going to be there by, by that April. Okay, great. Well, let's move on to the principal's report then. So you have uh, my report in front of you. Two things that I'll add. Uh, one is um, today, actually, I met with a um, person who did a promotional video for Sharon on the tree. Oh, okay. And we started talking initial ideas and set up some time for us to come in and just meet with people organically, walk around, see what each school is about, and start to create and cool things. Yeah. So, that's pretty cool. That is in the works and is going. And then um, I've shared before, but I don't think everybody was on. Uh, today, um, our literacy program in action was filmed for WCAX as part of Super Senior um, Spotlight that they do on WCAX on Thursdays with our literacy coach who comes in, Jamie Feinberg. Um, she was planning to come coach in Stockbridge anyways before this happened, so they came and filmed her coaching and modeling oh, cool. and got to interview some kids and uh, some staff. So we'll see what that ends up being, but that'll sh uh, premiere show on Thursday uh, on the 6 o'clock news. So, we'll get it on our website too. Yes, once we have it, we will. I have some pictures that I'll post later tonight. Um, to get people aware of it, but yeah, we're pretty excited. That's really exciting. So some good marketing and and absolutely. Whatnot. And then that's it. Unless folks have questions about my report, I'm trying to think. Okay. Is there any questions for our principal? Well, since we've got a couple of minutes before Jamie gets back, um, universal design. Yeah. Could you help uh, those of us? I, yeah. I, I went online, so I think I understand maybe now, but if you could use your quick sure. definition, because in uh, my educational terms, we don't now have that defined yet. I'm yeah, so universal it. design. So when we think about our, our systems, right, we talk yeah. about universally, which is for every student. So what you see in all your classrooms should be for every student. Then we have our targeted supports, which is where you see like literacy intervention happen or math intervention happen or speech or something then we have intensive supports mm -hmm. which usually can be a wide variety of things um usually with a special educator or it could be working with um, a school-based clinician okay, so universal design for learning is the idea that as a, as staff we're designing like to the edges not just down the middle of mm -hmm. the average student that's in our yeah. classroom but that our instruction includes everybody that's in front of us. Nice. So if you think about the students that excel and school maybe comes easy to and they need a challenge, you're designing for that kid as well as you're designing for a student who might need some more support or modification. So it's not one universal, it's the universe is an approach that everybody learns. Right. And, and uh, so it's tailored to each student's Right, Need. you start to think about how to do that, and you can group kids in different ways, right? So they're challenged or, uh, by a different activity in a different way. But our focus is really connecting, uh, and what we did in most of our um, last two Fridays ago now in service around was designing our learning intentions for students. So what can they do at the end of the lesson? By the end of the lesson, they should be able to do something. And we focused on posting those, but what does that really look like other than writing them on the board? How are you using it as an instructional tool? Uh, how, yes. I love it. So, and some of the ahas were like how brief it should be, how um, sometimes we put one really big one, but there's like a lot of steps in between. Yeah. Um, sometimes there's a lot of one of the bigger conversations is like in a math block. Well, depending on what workplace they're on, it could be a bunch of different learning intentions that they're focusing on. So mm -hmm. how do we make sure that they know that and they can show us those things at the end too? Thanks. I'm walking to the cut. One, 
Oh, yeah. Actually, though, um, I'm thinking about uh, Ed School, at University. I was at Syracuse and then Ed School, all the university mm -hmm. Ed Schools for uh, you, know, you graduate and you know how to teach supposedly. So, gross generalization. But when incoming teachers, do they know all this stuff, or are they learning as we're kind of learning about new techniques, new curriculums, new approaches? New designs. Um, I mean, my assumption is is that when we have a new hire, that there's a lot of things about how we do our work here that we have to teach them, right, and support them. So they got the interest, passion. They've got the fundamentals, right? Okay, and the talent to be yeah. Able to and that's why that mentor mentee program is so important. When new hires come on, that's why we have orientation days. It's why we try to front load in services up front, if you look at our calendar, so that, that there's time built in so that we can really make sure we're giving folks those resources, um, you know, within the first month of school. Thank you. Yeah. Cynthia has joined us. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Hi there. Where's the dog? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, well, we uh, just are finishing up the principal's report, and if there's no further questions, we'll move on to the business manager. Good evening, everyone. You have my report. It outlines all of the reporting that is due during the month of April. A majority of our reports are due April 15th because it's all the reporting for third quarter. So it's a busy time, lots of those. Plus, we've got the two budget meetings for Strafford and First Branch. So if there's any questions, I'll happily answer them. How are things going? I think things are going very well. <laughs> That's all I need to hear. Thank you. Good. All right. Is there any uh, other questions for our business manager? If not, we'll move on to uh, policy committee update. Patrick was in attendance in person <clears throat> for the last meeting. Um, well, uh, well, we spent, I, we had four four policies to look over that night and we, we didn't even get through one. So uh, we're really, I would say that it, the group's working incredibly hard on our um, personnel policy in regards to making certain we have an alcohol and substance free workplace. Um, and so we've made some pretty significant revisions to that. It still was not in a place to come out of committee. That group just added another meeting next Tuesday night, which I said to them, I'm like, we got to just stay. I don't, if it takes four hours, it takes four hours. We got to get those <laughs> policies <laughs> out. And so um, next Tuesday, I hope okay. we're at a place to move four policies forward that have revisions <laughs> and readings for you guys. So lock the door. That's where we're at. Out the whip. <laughs> um, Okay. So that's the policy committee update. A lot happening in it. It's just we're not, yeah, I'm hoping we can get them to you all for readings after next Tuesday. Okay, great. Any questions for the, uh, on the policy committee update? Okay, we'll move on to the um, endowment committee update and possible action on mission statement. Um, is the mission statement? Should be in. Okay, the policy committee. Um, hasn't met in too recently, um, but there was put forth a um, mission statement that we would like to um, recommend that the board uh, approves. Um, and I can read that. It's um, the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District Board has four endowments benefiting students, educational purposes, and facilities under the board's care. In fulfilling its mission, the board is responsible for prudently managing these funds while proactively supporting each fund's purpose. Um, so the committee just really, um, you know, kind of wanted to get some, some guiding stars um, uh, going going into the future because um, it's like to kind of pave the road here for a future um, uh, board to use. Um, I don't know if anybody else from the policy committee wants to say anything about it. Um, or there's a uh, the key uh, is uh, the last sentence. Both were 
need to we have um, <coughs> responsibilities for these funds. We got to make sure these funds don't run out and uh, are, are, are poorly. So that's the prudently managing we're talking about. Get, uh, we're reviewing and getting a, uh, probably a new financial mm -hmm. advisor to advise the committee and therefore also uh, uh, the board. And the other one is to be proactive on utilizing monies. And we, we try to look at the people that were so um, generous and foresight and what they cared about, passionately about school and to have we thinking the same way how would they like to spend it where are their needs that we can fulfill through prudently spending uh this and these endowments and so that's the dual role we think we have and uh, um yeah we'd like to, to get the boards um to move ahead is there any um, other questions or comments on this endowment uh, fund mission statement. Uh, we would like to recommend that the board adopt it. So that would be with a, a motion to adopt this as a endowment funds mission statement. I'll move it. I'll second. The motion's been made by Bill and seconded by Robert. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing no discussion. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, excellent. Uh, passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, other updates. Um, we uh, are working forward with uh, the lawyer with the wing, um, which is this, we needed to go to probate to try to change the language. And that is moving forward. It's in his hands and um, um, it's, it, it's moving forward. So. My update. Um, people on what and why, why we need to do that. Oh, okay. Um, yes. So, uh, Beryl Wing um, gave uh, scholarship money, money to be a fund to be used for scholarships. And in the uh, language of the will, it states for graduates of Rochester High School. Um, but through other conversations with old, other elders in the community um, and her passion for um, uh, for educating kids, we really feel that her intention wasn't just the graduates of Rochester High School, but for the children of the Valley to be able to give them scholarships to continue their education. So we're working on um, on seeing how we can modify um, that statement. So it would be students from Rochester and Stockbridge? Hopefully, that and is the, that the are, so are the endowment committee has recommended to the lawyer that they would that's the language that they would like, but ultimately it is the um it's the judge who gets who who will look at the will, will dissect it, and really find what the intent is of the original will. So um we're you know sitting back and waiting to see see how that goes. Okay. Great. So let's move on then to discussion. Uh, our district's mission statement. So we had a number of mission statements that we got rolled around. We we discussed them in our annual retreat. I think really all of them that we had were all of them were quite good. It was really just kind of kind of trying to fine tune them a little bit. But really any of them were just kind of speak to us. Um, this is the one that. Um, uh, the latest uh, proposal um, and for the mission statement, and I will read it. We strive to ignite a lifelong passion for learning across our educational community by offering a rigorous individualized academic program with a unique emphasis on the integration of arts, outdoor exploration, experimental learning, experiential, experiential learning, excuse me, experiential learning, and core social values, which foster a culture of respect, responsibility, and empathy in order to prepare our students to thrive in a rapidly changing world. Is there any comments, um, discussion? 
You know, this was uh, Justine took all the yes. our versions, draft versions, and I think she created a beauty. Yeah, took our draft version, the GPT version, and. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah, I think it's still a little long, but uh, like it's a mouthful, but it does put all the little, like almost all of the little things we, we wanted, we felt important to have in there, in there. So that's my I, only thing. I'm like, uh, you you know, put all this stuff in, but it's also awfully long. So I'm just not sure if it's too long, you know, I can't really remember what the rules were in our retreat for the length of the mission statement. Does anybody remember? I don't think there was a specific no. length. I think it, I, I believe, I, I feel that it is right in line with all the other ones that we were. All right. I think there was a number of words or something. There's like a word, like no more than X I, words. I, my rule of thumb was try to keep it under 50. This is 60, but I don't I don't think we should get hung up on that. I no. think whether this kind of reflects what we're all about mm -hmm. and that we can always revisit yeah. at a retreat or something else down the, down and the road. We, we but, can always distill it. Yeah. And I, I like it um, because it speaks in plain language and understandable. You know, you when you read it, you, you understand you know what the intention is, is. Yeah. you know? So yeah, um, I like it too. I just wanted to throw that out there as what yeah. I think was wrong with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I entertain a motion to uh, adopt this as our, um, just, yes. Just one question. Are you comfortable with this? Is this what we're all about? That's what we do. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, uh, absolutely uh, no. A discussion. Because yeah, no, exactly. I, I could see bringing this to the faculty and not and people are like, oh yeah, this is what we already do. What what's the you know, sometimes you bring stuff to faculty and be like, where, where did this come from? What how does this connect? But well, you just have some crazy kind of board. <laughs> well, and I, I'll, I'll throw that, I'll keep that in my back pocket for what I need it, but not right now. Well, not like for to, this. I like to move the mission statement. Okay. I'll second. Mission statement has been moved by Bill and seconded by Robert. Is there any further discussion? I'd like to say that it's it's good that it isn't packed with can you speak. Right. Right. Okay, well hearing no discussion, we'll all in favor of adopting this as our uh, for district mission statement signify by saying aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Great. Right, we'll we'll get this centered more on the website now and you know, organize it with, with the okay, yeah. 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 Great. Okay, we'll move on to the annual meeting and mailer preparation update. Uh, so, Tara, uh, your office is taking the lead. I'm working through it, yep. Okay. Putting all this stuff together. Bill's been sending me stuff. You've been sending me stuff. Mindy's sending me stuff. Okay. Tara always sends a draft of it to the board, just so you yep. know. Okay, perfect. Great, thank She's you. She's waiting on my letter. Okay. And I have to finish my letter. You're not alone, Jamie. <laughs> okay. You have my signature now. Yes, thank you. And Patrick's going to meet me in the morning to sign that. So we'll be able to get it posted everywhere it needs to be posted tomorrow. Our goal is to get a draft to you by Wednesday, meet okay. it to the board for some feedback. Well, and just email it to Tara. Okay. And then. Um, you know, ideally we're at the prayer by the end of the week. Great. Great. Right, Tara? That's about, that sounds like what we discussed earlier today. Yep. Is still snowstorm in back then? Or you... I don't think so. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, great. And what about, is there any annual meeting? Um, oh, I just need to talk the about dinner. the dinner. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it sounds like a great idea. If it's, if it's if something we're able to do, you know, yeah. have the, Let's go ahead and do it. Um, yeah, we have child care. Mm -hmm. We have child care. Child care set up. We'll do the dinner. The community school grant can support this, by the way. I think it's great. Idea. So I just, I do think, I think it has set a uh, a nice tone just to invite people in and like people, like just like they get to visit a little bit before the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought it was great in chair. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Tara was, it, it was, was it fairly well attended at Bethel for White River Unified District? 
Yes, there was a lot of community members in the cafeteria for the dinner, and they had the largest amount of students they've ever had for the child care section. Great. That's great. Okay. Yeah, it does. It's, it's community building. Yeah, I think it's community building. So, okay. and we're later, so I think it would be nice to at least offer dinner. Yeah. You know, and like we're not going until 730. Right. So. Absolutely. Um, okay. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and then um, any other annual meeting updates? You the we'll work on slides. slides. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Lizzie will do her celebration slides. Yeah. Some of the information you have already provided us will add to our slide deck. We've adjusted some of our slides, of course, due to just 127 and then HH50. Mm -hmm. But um, so, well, yeah, we've got some, we played with it some. Okay. This time. We'll, we see this we'll share it. With, yep, we'll share it with you guys ahead of time, just like the mail. Okay, good. I had a question on uh, uh, Tara as. Um, have our town clerks and the justice of the peace aware of now that we've got a, a, a time on it's Tuesday for the Australian ballot, um, 10 to seven, 10 to seven and all that. And they're squared away. So there's, we don't hear any surprises on their end. I think he's asking if you, somebody's reached out to our town. Yeah, clerks they both too. confirmed. They both confirmed. Okay. okay. Thank you. And yeah, sorry, Bill. I've worked with both I the town clerk. Garbled, garbled message. Sorry, Atar. Um, and the new warrant, obviously, we'll get to them because remember the we got questioned on the, the draft, the draft warrant. Oh and so, yeah. um, as soon as Patrick signs it, Tara's going to get it to them. Yep. Okay. And I was going to suggest, um, Amy, that we draft up a couple letters to the Herald. Okay. Uh, and I'll if it's okay with you, I'll do the first draft on Absolutely. that. And I just think it's nice to have us both signed by the chair and the vice chair. I think one speaks to the you know, the uh, articles of agreement and the results of our five-year merger as briefly as possible, because I think uh, people will be interested and we've got a lot mm -hmm. to show for it. And the, and the second one is yeah. kind of the tax impact on and uh, academic Performance. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing as you have in your letter, and we'll have in our slides and everything else. Well done, by the way. Um, oh, just, just the readership of the Herald won't necessarily be everybody that comes to the meeting, but we want to keep spreading the word that of success and a reason that why this budget makes sense and needs to be supported. So, we can move. so I'll try to absolutely um, try to put something together. On this. That's okay. Yes, please. And I'll uh, share that around. That would be great. Um, okay. Uh, is there anything else for you to discuss about the annual meeting? Okay. We'll move on to um, book study board development. All right. And um, I know you love this, but uh, our calendars, we get through tonight very briefly. Um, and then we have next month off because we're going to be concentrating on our annual school meeting, and then we'll have a last chapter in our June meeting. And I'd like to just kick it off. We're talking about chapter five, when things go right. And I just wanted to reinforce something because it's everybody has, has an opinion about it, and that is town meeting or school meeting. She was um, not enough people go, and that's a sign of failure and we should be moving towards Australian ballot. Um, and there is in this uh, chapter five, they kick off of this study and some backup studies that said um, their studies showed that the turnout, which averages 10 percent, is not based on people not being interested, not caring um, or throwing hair on fire, we've just given up. It's just the opposite, that people look at the, the literature and are comfortable with what's going on, what's being proposed, right. and how things are going. And that's always been my feeling, too. When, when you're doing fine, you don't have to show up at a meeting, right. but if you feel that things are going up, off the rail right. and into the ditch or worse, and uh, or things are collapsing all around, you better you want to show up to to point out the problem and make sure it's fixed. So 
I think that if nothing else from that chapter, I think it reinforces that we don't play, ain't it just awful, people that can come and, and we want them to come and we want them to participate and give us their opinions and, and ideas, but don't uh, assume that because we don't have a having 100% or 50% of our population that and somehow that's that bodes poorly. Thank you. Um, so that's, um, and then, uh, so I was, that's my little two cents on that. Does anybody else have an idea they picked up on or want to reinforce from chapter five when things go right that you'd like to share with the board? We have Patrick now. Hi Patrick. Hi Patrick. We're on our book study. Yeah. Does anybody have a comment or uh, um, about chapter five that they'd like to bring up? If not, I'll give you one more. Okay, point. go ahead. <laughs> Take away that. It's, it's, uh, being comfortable with the status quo. There's no complaints. Nobody's um, writing, throwing spears or chucking tomatoes at us. Status quo must be great, and you know we don't have to do anything. And I think the author is saying we, the, the really effective boards, are always proactive, always leaning forward, um, and looking for opportunities to improve, improve board performance, or to help us be more effective in supporting the educational efforts of our professional teams. And uh, I think we do that pretty well, um, but it's one to always remember. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that? I mean, does that imply that if we, we things are going well and we don't have a lot of attendance that we should be worrying because we're not pushing the, pushing the edge? Mm -hmm. I mean, that we should be. I think there are two different things. One is that uh, if we don't get a packed house, um, don't misinterpret that at the same time, even though we get last year, we had a unanimous vote on the budget. That doesn't mean, and, and when the author is saying this, the budget is 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 in a means to an end, and we always gotta be concentrated on the end, how the budget's gonna support the ends that we're looking for. And, um, and but on the other hand, that we need to come, we need to come to these meetings prepared, do our homework, um, listen and learn together, um, so that we can be active participants, teammates with with our staff. Um, and I think having doing that will be more effective, and I think the learning outcomes will be uh, improved. So. Well, thank you, Bill. <laughs> no, thanks to the author. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to 8.4, Capital and Facilities Plan and Prevention Maintenance Update. So uh, preventative maintenance plans actually got um, unveiled to our custodians across the SU on Friday during our SU-wide maintenance and facility training uh, to review them, but also to talk. There. So they're going to be sent out both electronically and in paper form. Um, to them. Some of our, our custodian crews prefer paper still. Um, we're moving toward to be more electronic, but uh, it's going to take a little time to get there. But one of the other things we're going to be implementing with the preventative maintenance too is the next time we meet, we'll look for feedback from them now that they're going to start using them. They're both daily checklist, weekly checklist, and monthly checklist. Um, but also, Starting next year, we're going to do quarterly walkthroughs with all of our lead custodians are going to take these um, checklists. And the goal is four times a year, we'll do like a field trip across the SU in the buildings to calibrate expectations with our lead facility folks. Um, and so that's the work that's happening on the preventative side. As far as our capital and facilities plan drafts, um, you guys were the, the last board for me with those drafts just based on when you budget, based on operating districts. All the other boards have drafts of their capital plans um, that we're taking feedback on. You should have yours by next month, is what I was told, okay? And what that provides is um, it'll bring a breakdown of each of your buildings in regards to over the next 10 years, looking at, um, 
what your the estimated um, lifespan would be for components of your building, um, but and then what the actual is and the difference. Um, and then the state does provide us an algorithm on what we should be putting aside um, money-wise based on square footage, but also based on what we're currently at in regards to expected age versus actual age. And so it will provide us an annual sum we should be putting away moving forward. Um, and so as soon as I get that, I'll share that draft with all of you. You should have it at least a few weeks ahead of the board meeting. And then what's helpful for me is if you send me your thoughts and questions, I can get that back um, to the two guys I have helping me with this um, so they can adjust accordingly and or clarify things for folks. Right. Okay. Great. And Patrick, I hope you'll have, I know you're probably busy right now, but when I get that out, any and all feedback you can provide will help us at this district, but I will also use it to inform the other districts plans that we're working on right now. So. If it's uh, not, if it's not difficult, could you share the, um, uh, the um, preventive maintenance? And oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. More than happy to do that. Yep. Great. All right. Is there any other questions on um, that topic? Okay, great. Um, so we have done our actions. Is there any new hires or resignations? None at this time. Okay. Public comment. Yes, public comment. And, and just as, as a note in, in the future, although it hasn't been. We haven't had a lot of public comment. We might put another public comment in the middle of the opportunity in the middle of the meeting. Okay, about that. Okay, great. Um, is there any public comment? If there is, if you can um, state your name so we know who, who we're talking to. Hi, it's Keith. I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, first, is there any mechanism in place that would permit um, a taxpayer to actually visit the school and see the progress that you all discuss uh, regarding our students so we can see firsthand what's going on? I don't know if... Um, okay. Yep, I guess uh, they allow visitors. You probably need to um, schedule that. I'm happy to set up a time if you'd like to someone else. Come and see. Okay, so I could make a you know request to to whom? <laughs> yeah, Dave, you, you would you would contact our principal. Um, she would okay. uh, schedule with you. That's great. Yeah. Okay, and my second question is, I guess uh, I'm unclear. Um, I was listening to the um, 8.3 regarding the book study. And uh, I guess I, I just don't understand the concept. So could you review that with me once again? I'm sorry. Okay, so we, um, the whole concept is that we, as the board, ha are continuing our education in what it, it takes to, and means to be a board member and, and what a, an effective board, some of the characteristics and some of the so learning some of those skills. Um, what has been nice is that a lot of what we've been reading is a lot of what we um, already practice. Um, so it's been reinforcing a lot of um, that in a positive way for us. Uh, this is the second book that we've read. Uh, today we were on chapter five, um, and the discussion was about when when things go right. Um, so that was um, that was what the discussion was. Yeah, I know, and, and I, I heard that, and I guess when things go right, that means that, I, I guess I, where I, my confusion comes from is that I didn't understand the point that people don't show up, so that means things are going right? Well, that was, yeah, that was just, you know, one part of the chapter that it's learning and monitoring and communicating. Um, you know, it, it, there was a lot more in the chapter than, than just um, talking about you know, it's engage. You talked about engaging the public, but I think it's. Uh, I'll let Bill maybe take over here, but it, it was more of um. 
don't feel that you failed because nobody's showing up to your to, to your meeting. You're not doing anything wrong if nobody's showing up to your meeting. But try to engage the community as much as you can. Yeah, uh, Amy, you said it was totally right. And in the chapter, uh, one of the emphasis, um, there are a number of emphasis, one of it was the importance of community engagement and community communication and connection. Um, the book, if you want to get it on Amazon, is the Essential School Board book, Better Governance in the Age of Accountability by Nancy Walser. Right, but I'm not sure I, I totally agree with the, that premises that, you know, people don't show up means things are going right. Um, I just think that sometimes people are just so involved in their everyday living that certain things just don't happen for them and they don't show up to meetings where maybe they should be more involved. So I think that concept um, may be flawed in its, its, its premises. Uh, the other thing I have to ask for the board um, is, I'll give an example, my personal example, is there's gonna be a vote for the uh, budget. Unfortunately, or I'm not, it's not unfortunately, I'm going to be traveling, I'm going to be away on vacation. There's no mechanism for me as an individual who participates weekly or monthly in listening to the board and um, what they have to say, but I don't have the right to cast any ballot unless I am present at that meeting on the floor. And I have an issue with that. And I can't believe I'm the only one that has things that conflict with being available for that particular meeting. So, okay, uh, thank you. We will definitely take that into consideration as we are, um, you know, looking at and reviewing how we um, do our business. Uh, thank you for that opinion. So we are aware of that that is a potential issue with our uh, voters. Thank you. And that is a t uh, that is a tension in in how we set up the, the meetings and has, we've had discussion on, on this over the years, uh, over and over again. So. so thank you for your public feedback on that. Okay, I guess well, at this I'm point, finished. Thank well, there, you. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much, Keith. Okay, yeah. is, is there um, any other uh, public comment? Great, um, our next, Meeting is Monday, May. It six. is, but we could move it. Yeah, because our annual is the next is, night. Is the next night. Um, There's nothing that we would need to have that the night before. I think it, it would be better not to it's try to. The following Monday. Yeah, let's do that. Let's take a look at that. Thirteen. Yeah. And that would be a reorganizational meeting. And I'm going to be out of town. The 13th. Oh, we can invoke, quote him into all sorts of positions. Sign him up for everything. Exactly. Does that sound okay for the board if we look at the 13th? Yeah. yeah um, uh, Cynthia or JC is is the 13th, the 13th of May, the, the second Monday in May, a possibility for our next board meeting. Seems fine to me. It's fine with me. <laughs> okay. Sorry to miss you, Bill, but ah. um, <laughs> if that works for everybody. Oh, Pat's on here now. Pat, what about you? Okay, sorry. I definitely did not mean to ignore you. I just haven't been here. Okay, great. <laughs> Future agenda items? We'll be reorganizing. The reorganizing, yeah. I do believe we have, is it a data report too? Mm -hmm. I don't I know, think I have to I'm, look at the calendar. I think I'm fucky because my has our test turned out. Got it, all right, so, I'll look. But double check. Yeah, you have a nice kind of an outline. Yeah, yeah, yeah a reorganization and meeting outline of the various things you want to do. That's great. Okay. <laughs> Well, then I look for a motion to adjourn. Move. So, second. Move and second. All in favor, signify by aye. saying aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Okay. Let's see if there's a score. Hmm? Let's see if there's a score.
What is it, five minutes in? Six minutes in?